are from Tokyo University, Japan. And today I'm going to talk about uh, with the title, Non-Native Binary Matrix Factorization uh, by Continuous Relaxation and Reverse Annually. And here is the outline uh, for our talk. And uh, we focus on reverse annealing. Uh, reverse annealing is a method for quantum annealing. And it is specialized for local search using initial solution. Wait a moment, please. Okay, then uh, matrix factorization is one of the suitable application for reverse annealing, but it is known its performance is not reaching exact methods. So here we aim to improve reverse annealing performance, and additionally we experimentally analyze the factors uh, to get good initial estimations for reverse annealing. And here is our method. Our method is based on solution estimation by continuous, uh, using continuous relaxation uh, for reverse annealing. We validate our methods uh, for two data sets. Uh, one is for uh, face, facial data set. And for this data set, we obtained improvement uh, for in learning performance and we found these results are strongly related to the initial estimation quality. And to investigate further more, we tested for random matrix. And for this set, data set, we found the estimation, uh, estimation accuracy did not, depend in, uh, did not depend on program size, but uh, this accuracy varies uh, depending on the distribution of relax solution. So let's get started. Uh, Non-negative matrix factorization is a technique to uh, approximate a given matrix uh, with a product of two small matrices. Uh, mathematical expression is like this, and we have uh, V as a input and we calculate W and H. And each element of W and H must be uh, non-negative elements. And uh, matrix factorization is classified into unsupervised machine learning methods and it is used to learn features from data matrix. Here's an uh, example of matrix factorization. Uh, here's the original image data and expressed as uh, matrix V. And from this data, we uh, calculate features and its weight. And uh, as a result, uh, uh, as you can see, reconstruction, as a reconstruction, we can ac approximate the original data with a small two matrices. And matrix factorization has wide applications such as image processing or audio processing. But in this study, we consider, uh, we consider with, uh, matrix factorization with binary constraints. Uh, with the binary constraints, uh, these weights uh, for features only takes binary variables, which is zero or one. And uh, in this constraints, uh, that data is reconstructed with a smaller number of non-zero elements in H uh, comparing to uh, normal matrix factorization. <clears throat> for an algorithm for matrix factorization, uh, alternating these to square methods for uh, matrix factorization is known to be effective. Uh, matrix factorization uh, can be translated into optimization problem, uh, as you can see this <coughs> uh, minimization of function, and uh, because this uh, that, W is continuous variable, but and H is binary variable, so we cannot optimize uh, in a time. So we uh, we decompose the, this optimization problem. First, uh, randomly initialize uh, H elements, and with fixed H, we optimize uh, in terms of W. This is a continuous optimization. 
And from these results, uh, results uh, we optimize in terms of H. Uh, this is a, a binary optimization. And uh, this optimization problem in terms of H uh, can be decomposed uh, uh, several optimization problem that you can see here. And this uh, optimization is, uh, corresponds to the column of H, and we can solve this problem independently. However, uh, the sub problem as you can see here, uh, these problems contains a well-known NP hard problem, uh, that is subset sum problem. So there is no polynomial exact algorithm for solving this problem. So, so uh, fast heuristics algorithm are effective to solve this problem approximately. So, so from this uh, algorithm, we are interested in quantum annealing. Uh, quantum annealing is, uh, is meta heuristics for binary optimization problem. And uh, we have original problem and we convert it to Ising model, and uh, by, uh, by doing annealing on this model, we have solutions of original problem. And during this annealing process, uh, the system exploits quantum fluctuation to efficiently search in solution space. Uh, the model of Ising, uh, a formulation of Ising model can be seen here, and each variables have two uh, each variable is, uh, takes minus one or plus one. And by adding the term of for adding quantum fluctuation, uh, and slowly uh, uh, decreasing the effect of quantum, quantum effect, uh, finally we can get ground state of uh, original problem. And reverse annealing is one of the methods for quantum annealing. Uh, reverse annealing is specialized in local search uh, in the vicinity of a uh, given initial solution. And reverse annealing is, can be used for uh, local refinement of known solutions uh, obtained by heuristics. Or we can use it for utilizing uh, previous solutions in the iterative al algorithm. Uh, here's an illustration of reverse annealing. Uh, we control uh, annealing parameter S, and unlike, uh, unlike QA, reverse annealing starts with a classical solution, and we gradually add quantum effects to meet, uh, meet the strengths. And then, uh, and normally, we anneal uh, the system. Then, finally, we have a better solution in the vicinity of initial solution. Uh, here's a preceding study, and, and reverse annealing is actually uh, used, utilized for matrix factorization. And for initial states for reverse annealing, uh, they used uh, the solution from uh, normal quantum annealing, or uh, the solution from previous iteration in the alternating algorithm. And such system uh, yields better performance than optimizing quantum annealing alone. But as a challenge is, uh, even we use this mes these reverse annealing methods, uh, the optimization performance is not uh, good, good comparing to exact methods. So then another motivation is uh, recently, uh, recent studies uh, claim classical methods such as greedy algorithm is effective for reverse annealing and in typical cases. So here's our aim. Uh, is there any way to improve uh, reverse annealing for this matrix factorization? And another aim is to get a better understanding for reverse annealing. Uh, this is, which is, uh, how can we prepare the effective initial states for reverse annealing? 
So here is an uh, overview of our methods. Uh, we use continuous relaxation uh, for initializing Ubersani. And at first, uh, we solve this uh, relaxed problem. Uh, each uh, variable takes a continuous variable uh, from zero to one. And this problem needs uh, continuous and convex, so we can solve this problem uh, really fast. And to get uh, the feasible solution for uh, binary problem, we just uh, round the result uh, obtained by this continuous problem. And we use uh, this rounded solution as initial solution for reverse annealing. And for this continuous optimization, we can employ uh, projected gradient descent method, uh, this for bounded continuous optimization. Uh, here is a, a projected gradient method, a descent. Uh, PGD is a gradient method for optimization with bounded constraints. Here's a, a general problem here, and each variable has bounded constraints. And we use a gradient updating, and in this updating rule, we use a projection to, to, to obtain a feasible solution. And this algorithm is known to be uh, known to be fast convergence, convergence uh, for this alternating least squares method uh, in matrix factorization. And additionally, for, uh, for each variable x, uh, only thing we have to do is just give uh, upper bound for uh, you know, zero to one and then we can have a feasible solution for relaxed problems. Okay, this is, uh, that was uh, our methods and we did experiments to validate our methods. Uh, we used uh, facial images to learn features. Uh, the Im image of size is 99, uh, 19 times 19 pixels and then matrix V, uh, the size of matrix V uh, is like this. And from these matrix, uh, we try to learn features. Uh, the number of features are set to 35. Uh, to compare our methods, uh, we use different solvers. Uh, PGD is a uh, relaxation heuristics, uh, just we introduced. And to know how optimized, uh, you know, how, how correctly optimized our method, we, we use exact method. And for quantum and reverse annealing, we employ, employ D-Wave's quantum annealer. And you can see settings for uh, this view's parameter. Then here's the results uh, of error combat convergence. And x-axis is a itera iteration number, and y-axis corresponds to error. The small is better. And as, as you can see, uh, for annealing is, uh, st means standard quantum annealing. And uh, the orange line is a result from forward annealing, but it's not good. And, and even if we do reverse annealing from this uh, forward annealing, it's not good uh, comparing to other methods. Uh, the pink uh, magenta line is re the result of reverse annealing uh, utilizing the initial solution obtained by previous iteration, but it has slow convergence. The green line is our uh, relaxation heuristics, and it has a good convergence, but 
it's not reaching the exact uh, method line. Uh, from realizations estimation, uh, uh, we use reverse annealing, and this method gets a uh, good result, uh, which is uh, comparable uh, performance to exact methods. So to investigate, to investi investigate why this uh, relaxation and reverse annealing performs uh, better. Uh, we, uh, we observed uh, humming distance from optimal solution uh, expressed as uh, this. Uh, humming distance zero corresponds to the solution is optimal. And uh, these figures uh, correspond to each iteration. And, and you can see for first iteration, uh, uh, quantum annealing and reverse annealing methods is not uh, close to optimal in terms of humming distance. But uh, relaxation methods are already uh, close to optimal in terms of humming distance. and then we, then if we do reverse annealing from these results, uh, the results uh, forced to move optimal, and uh, the amount of optimal solutions uh, increased. And as you can see, uh, if we iterate this algorithm, uh, the number of optimal solutions uh, is increased. Uh, as iteration increases. So why this uh, realization strategy has good estimation? So uh, we consider there is uh, several factors that influence, uh, that affect uh, reverse annealing. Uh, sorry, reverse and not uh, realization strategy. Uh, the one is state dependency. Uh, you can see this figure, and we solved a uh, re relaxed problem. And here is a distribution of uh, H elements. And as you can see, there are many uh, elements uh, that equals to zero or one, and a small number of uh, and not equals to zero or one. So the question is, uh, do this con distribution of React solution, uh, React solution values uh, affect the accuracy of estimation? Uh, that's one question. And the other factor is, is a problem size dependency. Uh, the, Generally, hardness of matrix factorization is related to problem size. So this, uh, do the problem size affect the estimation accuracy? That is one question for us. So, so we investigate the problem dependencies in terms of these factors. And we analyzed the quality of relaxation strategy for randomized matrix. Uh, this is an explanation about the data generation. We intentionally change the distribution of React solution with raw, with using, using raw as a parameter. At first, we generate H and W as an oracle, and we generate uh, V. And from this V, we estimate uh, H value. And this distribution, uh, with a, a parameter row, uh, you can see this figure. And with small row, there are many zero or one values as a uh, React solution. And for bigger row, uh, there is a few a number, of, uh, number of elements that is not zero or one. So if there is a many uh, zero or one, it seems the problem uh, is easy. And if the number of zero or one is few, uh, the problem seems to be hard. 
So here is a, a result of estimation accuracy of our reaccusation methods. As, as you can see, uh, the, y, the y axis corresponds to approximation ratio, uh, which defined as this. And as you can see, smaller row, uh, which is uh, with many zero or one values, uh, the reaccusation methods can estimate uh, the solution uh, uh, accurately. However, for bigger row, I mean, uh, if there is a few number of zero or one values in uh, react solution, uh, the, the accuracy of uh, reaccusation heuristics is not, uh, turns to be worse. So let me conclude my presentation. Uh, we introduced a reaccusation strategy to matrix factorization and we utilized the estimated solution to initialize real signing. And for experiments in learning facial images, we confirmed improved, improved performance by reverse annealing almost, that is almost equi equivalent to exact optim optimization. And these results uh, was associated with the closeness of initial states to optimality and uh, our reaccusation methods lead high accuracy for facial images. And but for randomized matrix, we found a deterioration in estimation for problems with few number of zero or one values in the react solution. And here's our future work. And uh, one is for the problem that the reaccusation has bad estimation. I mean, there are few number of zero and one values. Uh, in the cases uh, we're interested in, uh, does reverse annealing still performs better than quantum annealing? And what are more we interested in statistical statistic uh, analysis for general performance of reverse annealing in matrix factorization? Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. A few questions. I have a question. Yes, please. Um, it, it looks like on your slide that uh, your relaxed function f of x, you're assuming that it's uh, perhaps locally linear? Are mm -hmm. you assuming that it's linear in, in order to get this, this relaxed solution to uh, um, perform well, the relaxed computation? Uh, mm -hmm. And how important is that uh, assumption about the, the form of x? of f of x, there, uh, back one. Uh, so, what, so your question is uh, how this uh, relaxed solution uh, is yeah, important if you, for- If you look at the thing. next slide, slide 10. Okay. That's the f of x at the top there that I was um, thinking about. And I, I, the diagram looks like you're assuming that it's locally linear. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering how important the linearity of uh, x, the assumption of linearity of x is, is to the uh, quality of solutions you're going to get from a gradient descent type algorithm. Okay. Uh, sorry, please repeat your question. Oh, sure. Is, is it important? Is the shape of f of x uh -huh. important? to the uh, success yes. of this, uh, uh, this heuristic. Yes, exactly. Uh, we have a quadratic function for yeah. this fx. And still, uh, still with the cases, uh, this uh, PGD has good performance for our program. Thank you. OK, other questions? <clears throat> Estelle. Thanks for a nice talk. I was a bit confused on what you meant by iteration. Um, I suppose that for normal quantum annealing is like um, the number of annealing steps, but then you also have a learning here. So 
there's, there's a time step for you to learn your parameters and then you do annealing. I was a bit confused. Uh, so, so your question is, is uh, this optimization is how? Like slice 12, I think. Slide this 12. Slide? Yes, so okay. I suppose here yeah, that your um, PGD has two time scale, kind of one with um, the iteration where you learn, mm -hmm. you do kind of supervised learning, and then you have also where uh, you do annealing. Yep. So this PGD is uh, the case not using uh, reverse annealing, just using the estimation for uh, you know, optimization results. And this PGD and RA uh, correspond to if we use uh, these results for reverse annealing. And these res uh, So, sorry. if you only do PGD, iteration means gradient descent steps? Uh, sorry, grid. So, if you only use PGD, are you just doing gradient descent? Are you just minimizing your... your uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the continuous uh, matrix factorization, uh, you are right, but uh, we we are now considering a binary binarized problems. So maybe this is a bit different from you know normal gradient descent for this problem. Okay, I actually later. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think we have to move forward. So let's thank our speaker again. Yeah.